Hi everyone, this is Wanda, and I wanted to come and do this video today to share with you two significant dreams. Uh, one my husband had about a month ago, and then one that I had last night. Um, you know, a lot of times I try to write these things uh, in my blog and write it down on paper, but every so often there's things that I know I have to share through a video. I need to speak it out. And because there's some very specific details um, that are just best shared this way. Uh, and then the title that I have, you know, we're not ready for the battle that's coming. This is not, uh, these dreams are not an urgent call that there's an immediate danger or threat that we need to, uh, you know, like a crash diet kind of thing. This is a call to a perspective and a value and a reality that we as spirit-filled believers, we as followers of Christ, um, citizens of another kingdom, that we need to be aware of some things because of what is coming. The reality is we're already in a battle. The battle is a spiritual one. First and foremost, the battles that we face are spiritual. So that this is not, these are not dreams about Armageddon coming or some World War III or whatever. You know, it, it's, the, it's the darkness that continues to come closer and closer to all of our front doors. And the Lord's wanting us to, to see His purposes in it, but He's also alerting us to some things that are not right. There's some things that we are not ready for. He wants to pour out His Spirit. He, he wants to come with such glory and with such power, but as a whole, as a church, we are not ready to steward what He wants to pour out. We're not healthy enough. We're not spiritually minded enough to be able to steward long-term what He wants to give us. All that we're experiencing now is in preparation. It's not even ultimately about a president or an election. It's about us. It's about you and I as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ. He is getting us ready, which by the way is really who the enemy's after. The enemy's not just after Trump. The enemy's not just after our nation. He's after the body of Christ. He's after you and I as believers to steal, kill, and destroy our inheritance. And so this is the context of what I want to share these two dreams because the first one my husband's a pastor and it was a word specifically to pastors and to leaders but it also then leads into the dream that I had last night in which I was under um, spiritual attack and I wasn't ready for it so this has really stirred my spirit um, you know my husband and I we just spent time in prayer this morning and again this is why I want to bring it to you so very briefly the dream that my husband had last month was uh, he meeting with a lot of the pastors in our own community. And uh, it wasn't any organized meeting. It was actually very organic, uh, small groups gathering around common interests and just relationships. But yet they had all been called together um, by the Spirit, I believe. And in the midst of that, um, some angels show up. They literally drop down from the rafters in the midst uh, with these huge chairs uh, like they want to take a presidents and the biggest one approaches my husband Bobby and Bobby asks him is there something that you want to say to us and the angel says yes and Bobby says what is it and the angel says they don't know the battle that's coming they're unaware and as a watchman you know Bobby received that and continued to watch some things unfold, and I'm not gonna go into details now about that, but it was a, a, an unfolding of what the Lord was doing within the hearts of leaders and community people uh, that he wanted the watchman to see. And at the end, Bobby asked this angel again, you know, do you have a message to share? And he said, people must move from being consumed by natural health to being consumed about their spiritual health. And this points to the spiritual battle. And it even then flows into the, the dream that I had last night of the reality that we live from and for another kingdom. We cannot afford to judge things, to discern things, to see things in the natural. We are gonna miss it if we do. We're on the verge of that because of the intensity of the deception and the counterfeits that are here we are very, e it's, it's very easy to fall prey to discerning things 
by our human nature and by our own understanding. We must discern by the Spirit. And so basically that was the gist of, of my husband's dream of you know, heaven saying, you're not ready for what's coming and we need to be praying. So the dream that I had last night, I feel gives more uh, clues and more instruction. Okay, how do we get ready? And that's what I wanna share with you. Because in, this, in the dream that I had last night, uh, you know, it started with me going from, I knew I was in one assignment and I was going to another assignment. And it was very clear that uh, the tools that I had used in a previous assignment, it was like they weren't relevant for where the Lord wanted to take me. And I felt like there was even a word in that for, for some of you perhaps that maybe are being transitioned from one chapter to another chapter or you're in transition. Don't assume that how the Lord used you or the tools that he gave you in that previous assignment is what's needed for what's ahead. Because actually moving into this new place that I was going in this dream, I had very little. I, I, I had the bare necessities. But what the Lord was going to reveal was it was his spirit that I needed more than anything. And so that was the first thing of moving from one assignment to the next. But then I had to go through a security checkpoint. It was actually like I was going into a foreign country or a different territory. Now this could mean several things, but it was interesting because when I got up to the, the, tra the agent there, she was Chinese and I immediately thought about the Chinese underground church because she, she was smiling. Um, and I didn't sense that I was going into hostile territory, um, but I just knew it was like a different realm. As I stood there, I was very aware that I was actually drunk in the spirit. I was filled with a joy. I was happy. Um, I was just, I, I was filled with him. And this agent looks at me and she smiles and she says, you're one of his, aren't you? And I responded, yes, I am. And there was a sense of knowing one another <clears throat> because we both knew him. And so I feel like this is even a picture, it's a reminder, we belong to another kingdom. And this isn't even just about, you know, our country, but the body of Christ is so much bigger than what we realize. And so um, the next thing as I go through the checkpoint is I'm in this room and I'm laying out my clothes, I'm getting ready. But I'm with a friend and this friend, it became very evident to me within the dream that this friend really represented the body of Christ, the bride of Christ because I knew that I was kind of there for her because her lover was preparing for a celebration. I knew that we were getting ready for something, a celebration, something that was glorious because as I looked around in our room and in the lobby, different places, he had left her flowers and it was a bouquet of flowers that I knew she specifically really liked. And I remember thinking in the dream, how thoughtful of it was because it was evident he was planning ahead. He knew exactly what she needed, what she liked, and, and he was very detailed in his preparations. And obviously that's just like the father. You know, he, he knows exactly what we're walking through. He has planned ahead. And I mean, even every, everything that the enemy thinks he's planning. I mean, God is so far ahead of him, okay? I felt like that's that's what the Lord wanted to convey even in that, is that he knows. But there was a problem about the flowers. They were drying up. They hadn't gotten any water. And this is what began to unpack this concern throughout the dream that I realized things were not quite right. And obviously, you know, flowers drying up, this was a, a, a sign of affection and intimacy. The Lord's saying, don't let your relationship that intimacy dry up. It needs watering, just like plants need water every day to, to stay healthy, to stay vibrant. We've got to stay in that place of intimacy with the Lord. And so the next thing that I know then is that I'm going is I'm trying to get ready. I'm trying to put in my contacts because I wear contacts. And I tried two different pair. And actually there was still, there, there's some real details that I'm not gonna share at this point because I'm, I'm still praying into it. But they were both, the first pair was, was dried up. I couldn't put them in. And actually it was because there were some bugs in them. And it was like I hadn't been attending to them. And then the second pair that I tried too, it was like something wasn't right with that. And as I asked the Lord, what do these contacts represent? And he said, you must see things by the Spirit. 
You cannot discern things right now through your natural eyes. You must have the eyes of the Spirit to properly discern what is happening, what is taking place. And I'm not talking about the kind of discernment that all believers are supposed to grow in. Uh, there's a level of discernment that just has to do with maturity, with growth, with learning, you know, through trials and errors and, and building a track record, that kind of discernment. This is another kind of discernment. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift of discerning of spirits, whereby we do not judge according to what we think with our human understanding, but it is by the Spirit. This is so critical. It is so important. We must discern things by the Spirit, even in this next election season. And what we are reading in the news and what we are seeing, we cannot get caught up in a political spirit and, and try to get involved in this war of words in our own human understanding. We have to see things from another kingdom. We have to see things from His eyes before we say anything. And so I felt like this was the urgency that, that I wasn't even able to put in my contacts to see through His eyes adequately. And even as I was doing this then, that's when I began to get attacked. And I could feel it from behind. It was almost like something was poking me. And at first I thought it was something in the room that had gotten in. And then I, very quickly I realized because it was so adamant, I knew in the dream I was under spiritual attack. And I began to immediately try to pray in the Spirit. I knew what to do. I knew to plead the blood of Jesus. And I knew to, you know, take authority over that, whatever. But very quickly, and this is what was disheartening to me in a real wake-up call, I was running out of breath. I mean, I knew the words to say, but I didn't have the breath to say them. And my, my voice was getting fainter and fainter. It was like I had no gas. I had no energy to even say it. And I began to get fearful because it's like, this is when I need the power the most and I don't have it. And so in this critical moment, I told my friend, let's go next door and get some support. I, I need some help. And so we go next door and I tell this other person, please pray with me. And this person had no clue. Not only did they not have any breath, they were almost embarrassed. It was like they, they didn't even want to be a part of it because they had no idea what to do and it was going to be an embarrassment. And, and as I w went back to the room frustrated, frustrated myself because I wasn't able to rise up at this time, but then realizing why don't I have to support them? The last thing in the dream was that even the friend that I was with was questioning what I was even doing and why I was doing, like the method that I used or why do I think this is so important? And that's how it ended. And I woke up with a sense of, of urgency, knowing that I was under attack. I did not have the strength by myself. I needed support. We weren't ready. And I felt like it, it did represent, uh, you know, many believers. I mean, we each have areas of weakness and things that we need to, to work on. But you know, it all goes back to the same thing of what are we feeding ourselves on? How are we feeding our spirit? Because when those tests come, none of us know when they will happen. Whether or not it happens to our family, in our community, you know, violence starts erupting, uh, you know, these mass shootings, all these things. It, it causes every one of us to be anxious of when is it going to visit us. And the Lord is saying, listen, by my spirit, you can be ready. And it's found in that place where you every day, you come in that place of my presence and you get filled up so that when the time comes, you know how to pray in the Spirit. You know how to speak the Word of the Lord with authority. You, you have a confidence to do it. Because the fact is, when I started getting under attack, it shouldn't have been a big deal. I didn't feel like the world was falling apart, that it was a major attack. It was like just a little, you know, it, it felt like a poke. And I thought, this should really be easy to take care of. And I couldn't even do that. And so, you know, as I, as I prayed about this this morning and then I thought about my husband's dream, um, I just felt like, man, you know, I want to invite you to join and to pray. We need to pray that we are ready for whatever comes and that we make this a daily exercise. We can't treat, treat this like a crash diet. You know, what can I do because there's some immediate thing that it's going to continue to get darker. There are battles ahead. I don't know what kind they are, and they may be different for every one of us. But the Lord has given us the tools that we need. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we think we need all this extra stuff, and but in the end, it's got to come from our spirit. We live in another kingdom. And I just wrote down some things to make sure. 
Um, guard our intimacy with the Lord on a daily basis. Spend time with Him. Spend time in the Word. Uh, because when, you, when a testing comes, when a trial comes, what's the first thing out of your mouth? Hopefully it's the Word of God and it's His truth. Um, refuse to be offended. Because I felt like this was another thing about seeing by the Spirit. Because there were, there were some bugs in my contacts and I really felt like the Lord was saying, there's some things that bug us by what we see. And we can't get offended. We, we have to determine to not let offense blind us to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Um, because the Lord will offend minds to expose the flesh. He doesn't mind offending us if we can discern by the Spirit. And then even at the end, you know, how, how my friends were responding to this need that I had to pray. I, again, it's, I think there's some that just aren't ready because they haven't been filling themselves. And I believe there's also a portion of the church that um, doesn't accept the things of the Spirit. And this is a burden of mine, of a, a segment of the church that um, isn't filled with the Holy Spirit, doesn't know the power and the reality, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And without that, we're going to continue to see things differently. We're going to continue to interpret things differently and, and knock heads. And so join me in praying that we really um, get ready and that you know, this is a message of hope because there is a glorious celebration. And it's not just for the afterlife, you know, when Jesus returns, but there is an inheritance here. This is, this is not a, a call to get ready. Actually, the song, song that I thought about at the end of this dream was, and this harkened back to, what, 30 years ago, the song, I Wish We'd All Been Ready. That's what I thought about, but I don't, this has nothing to do with the rapture, okay? Um, the Lord doesn't want us to get ready to leave. He's saying you've got to be ready to stay. You've got to be ready to take your stand because now is when the glory of God is going to be revealed. Now is when the kingdom is going to be manifested through you. Now is the time and we've got to be ready. So let's not waste our opportunity. Let's pursue things of the Spirit. Let's stay in that place of His presence. And remember that we live in another kingdom. And let's live from that higher realm and call others up to it. Amen.